to the Waterloo Virtual Open House. I'm Professor Valerie Ward from the Department of Chemical Engineering. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, what chemical engineering is, what kind of things chemical engineering chem chemical engineers do, uh, what you would learn in a chemical engineering degree, where you'll study on the Waterloo campus, and what career opportunities you will have after your degree is complete. I just want to start by uh, talking about what the difference is between science and engineering. So sciences are basic sciences like chemistry, physics, mathematics, and biology, while engineering are applied scientists, sciences like chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, physical, civil engineering, and biomedical engineering. Um, and so what is the difference between the two? So scientists really work at improving our understanding of the natural and physical world, and engineers really use that knowledge that they create to build new processes and products that fulfill a societal need. So while scientists use the scientific method to analyze a system, engineers use design a design-based approach and um, iteration or you know, continuous improvement in order to create their processes and products. Um, because the products and processes that we're trying to make uh, must fulfill a need for society, um, we also, in our engineering programs and in chemical engineering, teach the importance of our role as engineers in creating and maintaining safe products and processes, because it's important not only to safeguard the safety of our customers, but also all of the different stakeholders involved in taking one thing and, and converting it to another. So what is uh, chemical engineering? So chem chemical engineering is an engineering discipline that uses the principles of physical science like chemistry and physics, as well as life sciences like biology, um, and co combines it with tools like mathematics and economics in order to transform raw materials or chemicals into more useful products or more useful forms of that material. Um, and so, Chemical engineers really have to first conceive of a problem, um, design a process or pro uh, product in order to solve that problem. Um, and then we uh, transform materials using either a chemical or biological method um, into our product or process. And we, in order to do that transformation process, we have to be able to transport materials around as well as energy in order to accomplish those goals. So chemical engineering, um, one of our alumni once told me the way that he thinks of chemical engineering compared to kind of the, uh, the first traditional chemical uh, engineering disciplines of civil and mechanical is that civil is all about things that are static. You know, you build a bridge and it stays there for a long time, hopefully. Um, and mechanical engineers, you know, they are working on things that are in motion or moving. Um, well, chemical engineering is really about transforming materials and transforming things using biological or chemical processes. And so we, we use all of these principles of mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology in order to solve a wide range of uh, industrial and societal problems. And we always do so in a safe, uh, economically, and environmentally appropriate fashion. Now, um, many of you might be thinking about how chemical engineers just work in oil and gas industry, but um, chemical engineers are were traditionally um, from that field, but we have evolved a lot um, in the in the years since then. And while those industries have contributed significantly to increasing the standard of living, and chemical engineering has played a big role in increasing the standard of living over the last 100 years in our society, uh, we're very forward thinking. And we are now kind of moving on to try and solve some of the big problems that are addressing our, our uh, global population. So things like human health, sustainable agriculture, uh, climate change, and sustainability. So with the current pandemic, um, it's really highlighted one of the subdisciplines of chemical engineering, which is biomanufacturing. Uh, so sometimes we need to make products that are biological in origin, like, for example, vaccines. And in order to scale up those vaccines and produce, for example, a billion um, you know, doses in order to inoculate the whole world, um, you need to be able to take your scientific research that the scientists are doing to discover that vaccine and scale it up into enough doses to produce a product that is safe for uh, 
lots of people. And chemical engineers can play a big role in reducing the costs of that process. Um, and by reducing the cost of that process, we can often make those treatments more accessible to people. So a good example is a, there's a recent technology that costs about, um, treatment, sorry, that costs about $400,000 per, per patient. That is not um, something that is easily um, paid for by the patient, nor is it something that's easily paid for um, by a government. And so by, you know, investigating and improving processes for manufacturing these kinds of technologies, uh, we can reduce the cost and increase the accessibility of that to others. Now, uh, chemical engineers also see a big role in the future for us in things like sustainable agriculture, enhancing the quality of food, increasing the quantity, um, improving drinking water resources, as well as um, addressing some of the problems with climate change and sustainability of current processes. So reducing greenhouse gas emissions from current processes, uh, designing new processes so that they don't uh, have the same environmental impact as, as previous ones had, uh, creating more sustainable energy sources, but also addressing the problem more directly by things like carbon dioxide uh, capturing. So what kind of things do chemical engineers actually do? So they design products or processes. Um, they can also monitor, analyze, and improve oper operations. So continuously improving the sustainability and the uh, environmental impact of, of current operations is a big area. Um, chemical engineers might supervise technician or, or also manage large teams or departments or projects, as well as potentially manage whole companies. Um, and a lot more of our alumni are also going into uh, entrepreneurship and, you know, they're seeing a particular problem that they have come up with a solution for and they're pursuing it, um, uh, pursuing that particular passion um, through entrepreneurship. So what kind of things will I learn in my chemical engineering degree? So uh, chemical engineering uh, core courses uh, are uh, basically, we start with the sciences and mathematics. We do chemistry, biology, physics, calculus, and engineering mathematics, as well as a little bit of programming. Um, we do process engineering uh, as you kind of progress through the years, so reaction engineering, separations, uh, transport phenomenon, so how uh, fluids move, how heat is transferred within uh, materials, different types of materials. Um, we do bioprocess engineering, physical chemistry, thermodynamics, and process control and process design. Process control is all about how you control a process once it's running um, in order to monitor you know, the quality of your product coming out, the quality of your feedstocks going in, and, and ensure that the uh, plant is operating in a, um, in a safe and, uh, and uh, understood manner. We, uh, then do more process modeling and optimization and control courses um, in areas like advanced process dynamics and control, numerical methods and computational fluid dynamics, as well as uh, simulating and optimizing models and methods. Um, and then after you kind of do uh, the core courses in chemical engineering in the third and fourth year, uh, mostly, uh, you will do some chemical engineering technical electives uh, and you can choose which ones you're most interested in. There are ones in energy and environmental systems and processes. So things like air pollution control, wastewater pollution, uh, solid waste management, industrial ecology uh, is a good, uh, an interesting one to me where we study the life cycle of a product or a process all the way from where you got your feedstocks from and all the way to how is that product recycled at the end to see if it really is environmentally sustainable. Um, there's also contaminant transport, energy systems engineering, um, petroleum production, and things like that. Uh, there's quite a few technical electives in materials and manufacturing processes. So there's polymer science and properties, uh, nanomaterials, metals and composites, polymer reaction engineering, um, advanced process, bioprocess engineering, synthetic biology, food process engineering, um, nanomedicine and, and nanobiotechnology, to name some of them. And uh, our third area we have quite a few in is uh, chemical process modeling um, and optimization and control. So more advanced process dynamics and control, um, 
numerical methods, um, and optimization. So Waterloo uh, is a co-op engineering school, and so all of our programs do co-op, uh, including chemical engineering. Um, in chemical engineering, we start with about 140 students coming into the class in 1A, um, and then they're split into two streams after their first term, into stream four and stream eight. So in stream four, um, they start after four months of school, they start their first co-op, that's why we call them stream four. Um, whereas in stream eight, they start after eight months of co-op, uh, eight months of school, sorry, they start co-op after eight months of school. Um, and one of the standard features uh, in chemical engineering that's a little bit different than other engineering programs is that we um, have a eight month co-op term um, that either takes place right before your fourth year or in the middle of your third year, depending on which stream you're in. Um, and, and that allows you to do kind of to either work for the same company for eight months, uh, which is the ideal one because you can learn a little bit more advanced skills if you spend more time there. Um, and also uh, it allows the students to all come back and both streams rejoin for their fourth year, which is when they do their um, capstone project, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and you can see uh, if you want more information on the CLOP program and the sequence for chemical engineering, you can look at this website here. Um, so the capstone project we do in the fourth year, it's like a design project um, that students work on and they get to choose something that they are interested in. And I have a, a few uh, capstone projects here that you can see um, that people did in 2019. We have um, for example, scale up of a biofilter for uh, volatile organic compound removal um, of pollutants. And uh, for example, we have synthetic processing of co coffee beans. We have polymer uh, absorbents for removing uh, hydrocarbons in water uh, or desalination technology um, and um, methane sensors, for example. So there's a lot of variety in what students are interested in and what they uh, can do with their chemical engineering degree. So where uh, will you study when you're at uh, the University of Waterloo in chemical engineering? So we have uh, our own dedicated building, Engineering 6, which is the headquarters of chemical engineering on campus. Um, it was built uh, in 2012 and we're, we're one of the only programs that have you know, a building dedicated just for us. Um, it's uh, because it was built in 2012, it's equipped with modern uh, classrooms. We have an undergraduate student lounge, as well as a dedicated lab for the capstone projects. Um, as some of our students decide that they need some uh, prototyping and they wanna actually build what they're making in the lab um, and test it out. And so there's a wide variety of, of laboratory equipment there that they can, um, they can use. Uh, before we were in E6, we moved out of Douglas and Wright Engineering Building, uh, which was one of the first buildings at Waterloo campus. Um, and when we moved out of there, they totally overhauled uh, the interior of this building and built state-of-the-art equipment um, and laboratories for our undergraduate programs. Um, and so we have, uh, so it's all completely upgraded inside and we have pilot scale distillation unit we have a gas absorption column for CO2 capture, uh, injection molding machine, protein purification, uh, multiple bioreactors, as well as a computer equipped classroom. So there are other uh, resources that uh, students will have available to them at Waterloo. That includes uh, computing resources. So we have computer labs um, besides the computer equipped classroom I already mentioned. Um, that are equipped with modern engineering software and including uh, chemical engineering specific software that is um, available through our department. Um, and so that licensed software, uh, you have to have a license key to use it. However, uh, we've set, out, set up uh, servers that allow uh, remote access to that software um, from home or on a personal laptop. So you can access it from anywhere, not just on, on campus. The students uh, also will have uh, access to a, a variety of student uh, shops, including the machine shop for metalworking, uh, wood shop, project shop, um, as well as the rapid prototyping center, which 3D prints uh, rapid prototypes um, and also can do PCB manufacturing and laser cutting um, and the paint shop. So what kind of careers might a chemical engineer have after they finish their degree? 
So typically there's two kind of streams. There's industrial stream and academic. So industrial stream are chemical engineers that want to go straight after school and work in pharmaceutical companies, chemical companies, food companies, uh, material engineering companies, environmental companies, electronics or petrochemicals. Um, and then we have uh, kind of an academic minded stream um, and those students want to go on to be researchers or professors. Um, and do um, typically that involves some further study after the undergraduate degree. You have to do either a master's or a PhD or some postdoctoral work in order to go through that route. So chemical engineers are everywhere. Uh, what do they do uh, and where do they work? So uh, a big industry for chemical engineers is polymers um, or plastics. So Plastics include things like rubber goods, adhesives, foams, paints, coatings, and membranes. Um, and there's lots of applications for plastics in everything you can think of from automotive industry to our household goods, consumer products, textiles, food packaging, and more. Um, a lot of uh, plastics uh, companies and, and researchers are moving more towards developing more sustainable plastics that come from renewable feedstocks um, that are compostable or biodegradable, um, and uh, as well as antimicrobial plastics and coatings uh, in order to um, reduce the you know, growth of bacteria on different surfaces. Um, a good example of uh, industry where we can't really eliminate plastics per se um, is food packaging. So having uh, food packaging can't really be reused because you can't, uh, you could contaminate, you know, food by taking food packaging from one uh, and reusing it for something else. Um, so we can't reuse it. However, um, and, it, and it does keep our foods, you know, safe and, and uh, contaminant free. And so there is an incentive for us to keep using plastics there, um, but we can design more sustainable ones that can be uh, can biodegrade um, and be composted rather than using single use plastics that uh, stick around forever. So I have a few faculty spotlights that are kind of working in these areas and working with companies in these areas um, to advance these things that I'll talk about as I talk about the different industries that chemical engineers work in. So this one is Professor Tizazu McKinnon. Uh, he works in uh, renewable polymers. He works on polymers from bio biological sources. Um, and he uh, does a lot of work on producing antimicrobial polymers um, and polymer blends and composites uh, and nanocomposites. Um, and he teaches courses in things like uh, nanostructured materials and reaction uh, engineering. Biotechnology is also a large area for chemical engineers to work in, uh, not only pharmaceuticals where we need to manufacture things like proteins or antibodies, as well as small drugs like aspirin and things like that, but also areas like biofuels and other bioresource technologies, um, producing chemicals from biological um, feedstocks and uh, producing things like biopolymers, um, that can be produced in bacteria that are more biodegradable, like polyhydroxyalkanoates. Um, so I have another um, uh, professor spotlight here on Professor Evelyn Yim. So Evelyn Yim works on biomaterials and tissue engineering. Um, she uh, works at nano patterning surfaces of materials in order to improve the proliferation of cells on those surfaces. And that has applications in things like wound healing and repair of tissues. Um, and she teaches courses in nanomedicine and nanobiotechnology, as well as biochemical engineering and uh, engineering biology. We have uh, a lot of a lot of work from chemical engineers is in the field of advanced materials. So you know, making purpose-built polymers for specific applications, nanomaterials, or next-generation batteries. Um, also in fuels and renewable energy, so uh, producing energy from biomass and fuels from biomass like bioethanol or biodiesel, but also in other types of renewable energy like wind or solar or fuel cells, um, as well as oil and gas, and, and refining those products and distributing them as well. Um, and so I have a faculty spotlight here on Professor Zhongwei Chen. He works on membrane fuel cells and next generation rechargeable energy storage system. 
So not only uh, is it important for us to develop technologies for producing uh, energy in other ways, but we also need ways to store it if we're going to move away from a fossil fuel based economy. And, um, and so he works on things like rechargeable metal air batteries and lithium sulfur batteries. Um, and he teaches courses in electrochemical engineering, reaction engineering, and nanostructured materials. So uh, a lot of chemical engineers also work on consumer products. So uh, product, food product design and development. I have a lot of uh, uh, chemical engineering alumni friends um, that went on to work for places like uh, yogurt or um, milk processing um, companies. Um, and so uh, they work at you know, ensuring food safety and nutritional quality of those products. Um, uh, lots of chemical engineers work in producing products like detergents or cleaning products, packaging, um, as well as uh, pharmaceutical industry. So I have another uh, professor spotlight here on Christine Morisoli. She um, does research in uh, protein recovery, purification, enzyme reaction engineering, and food environmental engineering. Um, and uh, in recent years, she's worked a lot on soybeans and converting them in uh, proteins and soybeans into high quality films for wound healing. And she teaches courses in things like chemical engineering concepts, as well as food process engineering and engineering biology. Um, chemical engineers also uh, work in the automotive industry, um, making composite materials like tires, pipes, car seats, synthetic leather, um, as well as alternative fuels, um, not just for transportation, but also uh, not only also for cars, but also for things like the aviation industry, who are trying to move towards a more sustainable model for their industry. Um, and uh, in order to do that, you know, we need to make uh, better quality products that are more weather resistant. Um, and we also need to design uh, products that can control pollution from those um, uh, from cars and and planes, for example, um, and improve the industry overall. So I have another uh, faculty spotlight here. This is Professor Leonardo Simone. He does research in uh, sustainable materials for transportation. So things like making uh, the panelings for uh, the side panels for cars, uh, working on incorporating, you know, agricultural waste products into that in order to make more sustainable car parts. Um, and so he teaches courses in things like material science and engineering, polymer science and chemistry. So uh, kind of some of the more traditional uh, areas for chemical engineers to work in are uh, resource based in in industries you know, analyzing, designing uh, processes, uh, their control and operation of current processes, as well as new processes. Um, and, and things like uh, titanium, gold, iron, nickel, and aluminum extraction and refining, um, as well as producing high performance uh, fibers. Uh, also working in the chemical process industry. So not only making, um, bulk chemicals like transportation fuels, but also making fine chemicals that are used in pretty much every product. You can really, like most products use uh, chemical feedstocks somewhere in their process. And so, um, for example, if we think of something like aspirin, uh, it's synthesized using chemical reaction in, uh, uh, in reactors. However, those feedstocks that go into that process also have to be made in another process somewhere. Um, because they need to have, you know, high quality and high purity in order to be used in pharmaceutical processes. And so uh, chemical engineers work in all kinds of different chemical process industries. Um, and they might work on analyzing design or construction or process control and operation uh, as in new facilities, as well as retrofitting old facilities or um, you know, designing totally new new processes or consulting for companies that can improve uh, processes at existing uh, facilities. Uh, which brings me to the last one, uh, which is health, safety, and environmental protection and restoration. A lot of chemical engineers work in uh, risk mit mitigation, so preventing any you know disasters from happening in current existing processes or future processes. Um, using their skills to inherently design safer processes. So it's much easier to make a, a process safe if we start safe from the beginning. 
It's also easier to make a process more sustainable if we uh, incorporate the principles of sustainability at the beginning of the process design. Um, and so we can design uh, to prevent pollution. We can also design to reduce how many materials we use and how much energy we use while still making the same quality product at the end. Um, and so we're continuously doing that using new and emerging technologies to improve uh, processes around the world. And uh, we also might work on things like mitigating climate change by using carbon sequestration technology, uh, remediating sites, some of which were polluted by our previous industries uh, that were de developed by chemical engineers, but now we are working towards remediating and improving those sites. Um, and generally just applying principles of health, safety, and green chemistry to um, processes um, out there already. And so here's my last uh, faculty spotlight, which is Professor Eric Coase. Um, and he, um, he researches uh, fuel cells as well as hydrogen production and carbon capture and sequestration technologies. Uh, so he applies a lot of the principles of green reaction engineering um, in order to capture CO2 um, and mitigate some of these uh, uh, greenhouse gases that contribute to climate change. Um, and he uh, teaches courses in things like chemistry or reaction engineering um, uh, to undergrads. And that takes me to the end of my presentation. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed my uh, information about chemical engineering. Um, if you have any questions, you can please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you have questions that are specific about admissions to the chemical engineering program, please uh, go to this website or contact the engineering admissions office. Thank you and have a great day.